A people of planet Earth, in the rare instances you've bothered to use power armor, you've probably noticed wearing it makes most of Fallout 4's weapons look pathetically tiny. And when you tried using heavy weapons, I'm sure you also noticed how few heavy weapons Fallout 4 has, and how much they suck. To make up for this travesty, let's find some good heavy weapon mods. I've got 12 of them listed on screen, and a few seconds from now, you're going to find out which ones are good and which should be avoided. After trying out all of these mods, I have to say the best is RPD, Machine Gun. This weapon has beautiful animations, tons of attachments, it's well balanced, it's close enough to being lore friendly. I can wholeheartedly recommend it. I would also have to recommend T6M's Industrial Electromagnetic Driver and Cross Cryo Lance. They both make excellent high level alternatives to the Laser Musket and Cryo Later, respectively. With that out of the way, let's take a look at all of these mods in detail. First up is one of my recommended mods, T6M's Industrial Electromagnetic Driver. This is a very interesting weapon with a lot of unique features. It's injected into leveled lists, you can find it on high level gunners, rust devils, legendary enemies, and on vendors that would normally sell goss rifles. You'll have to wait until level 40 for it to start spawning, but you can find it much earlier at Concord Civic Access. As a nice little bonus, you can upgrade your robotic creations from Automatron with an arm cannon based on this weapon. That's great if you care about robot crafting, I don't. I think this weapon has a great model, I love the animated electric currents inside the barrel. It certainly takes up a lot of screen real estate, but that's probably intentional. The only minor flaws are a tiny bit of Z-fighting on the magazine, and an ugly seam on the carry handle that segments light hitting it. But in general, the texture looks good. The weapon uses laser musket animations and they work fine aside from one issue. If you use an automatic receiver and crouch in third person, your fire rate will be sped up immensely. This problem actually started with the vanilla automatic laser musket though, so I'm not going to blame the mod author for Bethesda's animation bugs. This weapon is quite well balanced. If you don't have at least 8 strength, firing it will make you stagger and cause a small amount of limb damage. That means being in power armor or investing in strength is essential for using this weapon, doubly so because of its immense weight. The laser musket animation set makes this weapon unwieldy in close quarters combat, even with the semi or full auto attachments. While this weapon is undoubtedly better than a laser musket, and has more single shot damage output than a Gauss rifle if fully upgraded, a non-power armor build would be better off sticking with the lighter and more accurate Gauss rifle. And getting the best upgrades for the electromagnetic driver will require a scavenger hunt all around the commonwealth looking for magazines. Once you get all those magazines, you'll have no shortage of modification options for this weapon. There's scopes, stocks, a bipod, barrels, modulators, suppressors, everything you could want. This will always be a heavy, mid-range weapon, but you can specialize within that archetype. You can try to make a one-shot sniper cannon, or a semi-automatic rifle, you can add electrical damage that does extra damage to robots, or just focus on maximizing ballistic damage. If there were a couple of paint jobs for this weapon, I would call it perfect. It's a great start for our list today. Second up, we've got the M60 Light Machine Gun. This weapon has no unique variants or pre-placed spawns, but it is integrated into leveled lists and can be found on Minutemen or Gunners, starting from level 15 and 30, respectively. Unfortunately, leveled list integration has been done by directly editing the leveled lists and not via scripted injection. That could pose a problem in the unlikely scenario you have other weapon mods that edit the same lists directly. The mod has been distributed as loose files, which may cause stuttering since the M60 uses multiple 4K textures. I highly recommend packing it into a BA2 archive. Besides the weapon itself, this mod also adds autonomous M60 turrets you can place to defend your settlements. That's a nice little bonus. I can't find fault with this weapon's model, I love its beefy sounds, and it has some wonderful animations in both first and third person. The reload blocks a lot of the screen, but I imagine this was an intentional choice. In third person power armor, assault rifle drum mag animations are used, which actually fit quite well if you're not looking too closely. Strangely, this weapon isn't visible on your back when using classic holstered weapons. I'm not sure why, maybe it's considered a heavy weapon and thus doesn't appear. The M60, despite having a slow fire rate and long reload time, is kind of overpowered. 
It does too much damage for a 308 automatic weapon and surprisingly has almost zero recoil. If it weighed a bit more and had some recoil, I might almost call it balanced, but it's not great the way it is. And there aren't many attachments available either. Only a handful of receivers, a plastic stock, a few barrels, a bigger magazine, an alternative sight, and a few muzzle devices. I would have liked to see some scopes or grips or paint jobs, anything. In this area, the mod really doesn't impress. But overall, this is a decent mod. It's nothing special, but I could see myself using it after packing it into an archive and merging any conflicting leveled list entries. Third, we've got another M60 mod, this time called M60 M60 E3. Unlike the last M60 mod, this one has no leveled list integration at all. It has two variants, an M60 and an M60 E3, which both can be crafted at a chem lab. There's also a unique variant with the never-ending effect called Peacemaker, which can be found at Sentinel Site. This weapon annoyingly adds its own 7.62x51mm linked ammo type, which can only be obtained by crafting it at a chem lab. This ammo was added solely so these three weapons could eject belt links, a tiny detail most people wouldn't even notice. This mod's weapons all use the exact same animations as the previous M60 mod, and at first I thought they had misaligned iron sights. Now I realize that the loose files from our last mod were overwriting this mod's animations. The iron sights aren't misaligned, it's just these two mods conflict with each other and should not be loaded together. Unlike the previous mod, these machine guns appear on your back when using classic holstered weapons, but as far as balance goes, they're no more balanced than the previous mod's weapon. They do even more damage while having the same reload time and fire rate, but this time there's some hefty recoil. At least until you use a bipod, which completely negates all recoil and actually pushes the weapon slightly downward with each shot. The M60 E3 does less damage while having less weight, but is otherwise the same as the M60 itself. I was disappointed with the other M60's lack of attachments, and this mod is equally disappointing. This M60 has basically the same paltry few attachments as the last M60, except without the stock. The M60 E3 has even fewer attachments than that. In the end, I'd have to recommend the other M60 mod over this. Neither are very good, but I feel like I'd have to do more work to get this one into a usable state. Fourth up is the M2045 Magnum Revolver Rifle. It comes with a faux mod that allows you to select between 4K and 2K textures as well as add leveled list integration and pre-placed spawns. I'm showing off the 2K version here, and it should be noted that the faux mod installs everything as loose files you'll probably want to pack those up into a BA2 archive. If you choose to add pre-placed spawns, you can find this weapon on the Pridwin or at Recon Bunker Theta. If you choose to add leveled list integration, Brotherhood soldiers and vendors will have it too. And you can craft the revolver at a chem lab for 3,000 bottle caps, along with its custom 300 AP ammo type. And there's a 50 cal legendary variant on top of the Commonwealth Bank called the First Strike. The weapon's model looks appropriately ridiculous, and it has custom animations that are very well made in both first and third person. In fact, in Power Armor, the first person animation set is slightly different, with a more confident reload and a punching bash animation. Sadly, this weapon uses double barrel shotgun animations in third person Power Armor, which look terrible. It's a shame since the M2045 was supposed to be designed specifically to work with Power Armor. Anyways, as far as balance goes, I don't think the weapon is overpowered because while it does have a very high base damage, no matter how you modify it, you can't get rid of its extreme recoil or do anything to increase the slow firing rate. It also weighs quite a lot even when cut down. It does do an extra 50% damage on the final shot, but with a 10 round cylinder, it's difficult to time the final shot to reliably take advantage of the extra damage. It has a decent selection of modifications, We've got a couple of receivers, some optics, a bunch of barrels, two suppressors, and three stocks. It's not a lot, but it's not nothing either. I really like this weapon. I just wish it had better third-person power armor animations and didn't add its own ammo type. Then I probably would have recommended it, because a few flaws notwithstanding, this oversized revolver is outrageous fun to use. Fifth, we have the PKM Machine Gun. This mod requires a framework called Extended Weapon Systems, which I believe is supposed to be similar to Tactical Reload. As far as I know, this is the only mod ever made that uses this obscure framework. 
Thankfully, there's a patch to remove the requirement. There's 2K and 4K texture versions of this mod. I'm showing off the slightly less massive 2K version. There are no pre-placed spawns or unique variants of the PKM, but it's been injected into the leveled lists of raiders, gunners, and vendors starting at level 15. You can also craft the PKM and its new ammo types at a chem lab. The animations are absolutely incredible in first and third person. I had zero complaints until I stepped into power armor. Then I realized in power armor this weapon has the double footsteps bug, its ammo belt cover doesn't move during the reload, and in third person the weapon's fire rate is boosted to insane levels. And it uses handmade rifle animations which don't fit at all, but that's the least of my worries. This weapon is totally unusable in power armor, which is a real shame since this is exactly the sort of weapon you want to use in power armor. Just equipping this weapon slows down your movement speed significantly, which I am not a fan of. I've also noticed that when firing this weapon into water, the splashes are massive and sound like grenades exploding underwater. This might be related to the weapon's new projectiles which penetrate cover. The PKM has an incredible amount of attachments just about everything you could possibly imagine. Receivers, paint jobs, scopes, barrels, bipods, suppressors, foregrips, rechambering options, this mod has everything. Some of the attachment combinations, especially the ammo types, push the weapon into overpowered territory, and there's no defending that, just like there's no defending a lot of the decisions this mod author made. This weapon uses a framework no other mod uses. It adds its own ammo types, its own slowdown system, its own penetration framework. It really doesn't play nicely with the vanilla game or any other mod out there. These strange idiosyncrasies make it impossible to recommend even if it is an incredible looking weapon. Sixth, we've got the Capital Wasteland Goss Rifle. It has a very small file size, less than 40 megabytes, and it's ESL flagged, which is nice. This mod's Goss Rifle has leveled list injection and appears wherever the vanilla Goss Rifle might appear. Additionally, this mod adds two unique Goss Rifles, one called Volaire inside the cockpit of Skyline's Flight 1981, and the YCS-186, which can be bought from Arturo at Diamond City. I don't think the YCS-186 even has a legendary effect, it's just a dirtier skin. I can't fault the model, it does a good job bringing the Fallout 3 Goss rifle design into Fallout 4, and in spite of this mod's small size, the textures look decent. Animations are terrible, however. The fusion cell doesn't even stay attached to the player's hand during the reload, and the animation is jittery with inconsistent motion. In third person power armor, we're seeing assault rifle drum mag animations again, but actually they fit perfectly so I'm not complaining. From what I can see, this weapon only has two alternative attachments. There's a shielded barrel and a medium scope, but neither attachment bothers to change the appearance of the weapon. At least this Gauss rifle isn't overpowered because it doesn't have any attachments that could make it overpowered. It's just a single shot weapon with a long reload time. It has good damage, but obviously terrible DPS. It also has a high AP cost and more weight than the vanilla Fallout 4 Goss rifle. Overall, this mod is very disappointing. At least it's free, unlike the Creation Club prototype Goss rifle, but it really needed some better animations and a lot more attachments to be worth downloading. Our next mod is the best of the batch, RPD Machine Gun. It comes in 2K and 4K versions, and requires tactical reload unless you get the no tactical reload patch. There's a 1.1 patch you'll need to grab too, and you'll also need a purple lens fix if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card. There's two versions of the weapon, a regular RPD and an RPD chainsaw variant. The regular variant starts appearing at level 25, and the chainsaw variant at level 40. Only gunners, vendors, and some raider bosses will have the weapon, and there are no uniques or pre-placed spawns. These weapons look and sound incredible, and the animator went above and beyond creating unique animations for both variants of the RPD in first and third person. I was blown away upon spawning these guns in for the first time. They leave quite the first impression. The only problem is a very common problem. There's no custom animations in third person power armor. Handmade rifle animations are used instead, which look bad. The balancing is pretty good. These weapons use the 7.62 ammo from Nuka World, and their damage output isn't significantly higher than the handmade rifle. The handmade rifle also has a faster fire rate and much shorter reload time. 
The chainsaw variant of the RPD has a faster fire rate, lower weight, and lower AP cost than the regular RPD, but it has fewer attachments and more recoil, helping keep it balanced as well. The RPD has a crazy number of attachments. Bipods, stocks, handguards, pistol grips, flashlights, suppressors, optics, everything you can think of, except for maybe skins, you can attach to this RPD. The chainsaw variant has fewer attachments since there's no rail for optics, but you can attach a laser sight to help your aim. I don't hesitate to recommend this mod. It's wonderful to see something I can just plop into my load order and enjoy without having to worry about replacing ammo types or fixing balance issues. Next, we've got the RPG-7 V2. This weapon has leveled list injection, but there's an optional file to remove the injection because the weapon appears too often. I would definitely advise removing the injection or editing the quest in Fallout 4 edit so the weapon only appears on vendors. If you don't, you'll find RPG-7s on gunners, raiders, and super mutants all the time, and they won't be afraid to fire in close quarters. Aside from that, there's one unique RPG-7 called Danger Close, which can be found inside the Sentinel site. You can also craft RPG-7s at a chem lab, along with all its new rocket ammo types. You should also craft a rocket switch ingestible so you can swap rocket types in the field. Generally, this weapon is well modeled, but I think the rear of the tube is supposed to be open, not closed. Maybe I'm wrong. Animations are excellent in all perspectives, except for, of course, third-person power armor, where the weapon uses vanilla missile launcher animations, which look terrible. It's a shame, since this weapon looks badass in power armor. Oh well. It's not too distracting, and the weapon is still functional. I don't think the RPG-7 is overpowered at all, because even using nuclear rockets, it's still a single-shot weapon with a long reload time, and it fires slow-moving projectiles that can easily miss fast-moving targets. The Vanilla Missile Launcher, or Fat Man, can be more useful than this weapon, especially with higher tier attachments. The RPG-7 itself has very limited customization at the weapon's workbench. Five different rocket types, a couple of scopes, and a few finishes are all you're going to get. To be fair, this isn't a weapon that lends itself to being modified easily, so I won't be too hard on it, but we could have gotten some different receivers maybe, I don't know. Honestly, I just wish the RPG-7 used vanilla missile ammo instead, because its new rockets are either useless, like the proximity rockets, or more dangerous to you than your enemies, like the cluster rockets. Still, this isn't a terrible weapon, and you don't have any other choice if you want an RPG-7 in Fallout 4. Ninth, we've got Dax Shoulder-Mounted Machine Gun. This weapon has no unique variants and no pre-placed spawns. You can find it on vendors, gunners, and legendary enemies starting at level 28. This weapon uses the Vanilla Missile Launcher's triple barrel animation, except for its medium magazine, which uses the quad barrel animation. You might think that using vanilla animations means this weapon works perfectly in power armor, but you would be wrong. Unfortunately, using a full auto receiver in third person power armor makes you fire in bursts, not full auto. Even outside of power armor, if you quickly zoom in and out, or switch between crouching and standing, you can greatly increase your firing rate. I guess these bugs are caused by Bethesda's shitty missile launcher animations that were never designed to work with fully automatic fire. NPCs who carry this weapon can't even use it in full auto. The SMMG is at least quite well balanced. The extreme weight, low magazine capacity, slow reload time, high recoil, and high AP cost negate this gun's high damage. The only balancing issue is that automatic receivers do the exact same damage as their semi-auto counterparts, but since this weapon was always meant to be automatic only, and semi-auto was just an afterthought, it's understandable. The attachments on this weapon are relatively few, but very interesting. You can attach a shield that gives you 40 damage resistance for an additional 30 units of weight. There's three magazines, a bayonet, suppressor, sawn-off barrels, and a couple of sights. Overall, this weapon is decent, but it really suffers from not having custom animations. Our 10th mod is Cross Cryo Lance, another mod I recommended. There are no pre-placed spawns or unique variants of the Cryo Lance, but it's injected into leveled lists after level 30. It's very rare, only found on vendors, railroad agents, and legendary enemies. You can also craft it at a chem lab, and the crafting recipe will be easier if you already have a Cryo later equipped. This weapon uses vanilla Gauss rifle animations and has the same charged shot mechanic. Because of this, it works great in power armor in all perspectives. Normally, I prefer custom animations, but not for this weapon. I think the Gauss rifle animations fit it perfectly. 
I love how shaky your aim gets when the weapon is fully charged. It makes the weapon feel really powerful. The light emitted from the barrel looks great too. Balancing is a bit on the powerful side. Interestingly, the weapon does mostly ballistic damage, probably because cryo resistance doesn't exist in Fallout 4. The small amount of cryo damage done can slow down enemies, a very beneficial effect. In total, the cryo lance does more damage than a Gauss rifle. However, it can't fire quite as fast as the Gauss rifle and has a smaller magazine capacity. I think if the ballistic damage was toned down a notch, it would be a more well-balanced weapon. I'd recommend using a mod that makes the cryo lance use cryo later ammo instead of fusion cells. That will help with balance. There's a decent number of attachments, three barrels, two grips, radiators to increase cryo damage, scopes, four grips, and a whole bunch of skins you'll need to download from an external website. I like this weapon a lot. Fallout 4 definitely needed more cryogenic weapons, and the cryo lance is exactly what the doctor ordered. Eleventh and finally, we've got MG42 and MG34. This mod comes as loose files. I'd recommend packing them up into an archive if you can, but it's not very important because this weapon only has 1k textures. Yes, I said weapon because this mod combines both the MG42 and MG34 into one gun. You can mix and match their parts. There are no pre-placed spawns of this hybrid gun, but there is a pasta-themed unique called Penetrator, which you can buy at vendors. The regular MG34 slash MG42 can be found on gunners, raiders, vendors, and on legendary enemies. It uses 308, but the Penetrator requires its own pasta ammo, which you can craft at a chem lab. I think the pasta unique looks stupid, and its ejected shells have missing textures, but the regular weapon looks fine. The textures are slightly murky, but that's alright. The animations are a bit fast for a machine gun, but that does help them line up more easily with vanilla weapons. In third-person power armor, submachine gun animations are being used, which look okay, I guess. Most of this weapon, aside from the barrel, doesn't appear on your back when using classic holstered weapons. That's even worse than it being completely invisible. I'm not sure how you'd fix this. This MG42 is very overpowered, with an insane rate of fire and high damage, even for a 308 weapon. The only saving grace that swings the scales slightly towards balance is the equally insane recoil. Unless you pull down on the mouse hard, you'll have a difficult time controlling this beast. The unique Penetrator variant does even more damage, but is otherwise very similar. There's only a small amount of attachments for the MG42, but considering it's a World War II weapon, there's enough. You've got receivers, three barrels, a bigger magazine, a bipod, two compensators, a bunch of stickers, and some overpowered incendiary and explosive ammo types, as if the weapon wasn't already powerful enough. Oh, and I almost forgot, this mod adds turret MG42s you can place in your settlements if you care about that. If you're going to use this weapon, I would highly suggest getting a patch that removes the useless pasta unique, and try to find a mod that rebalances the weapon, or do it yourself. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you found it somewhat useful. Give some of these mods a try, and tell me what video to make next time in the comments section. I'll probably ignore your suggestions. Toodles!